Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Um, thank you for being here. I'm very excited. Um, I am Kat Zimmerman. That's my full name. Uh, social security number. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited today to be moderating uh, the Men of Purgatory. As we know, very important part of the community and lovely men. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring out... What are your names? <laughs> Bo Smith, Tim Rosan, Michael Eckland, and Greg. Greg, full name Lawson, sorry. Um, oh, you're throwing those out? Okay. Grab it, Mike, over here. Do you need some? Bring it over here. Look. guys. Hi. How's it going? Having a good time in uh, Minneapolis so far? Yeah? I wish I made a mistake. I should have stayed an extra day because uh, someone told me about this Juicy Lucy hamburger. That they had. <laughs> uh, I made a mistake. I'm going to have to come back, I guess. We can make, <laughs> we can make that happen. We have runners. We have a system of runners. It's fine. We'll make it happen. So thank you for being here today. Uh, it's super exciting to be with all of you. Uh, thank you for uh, putting up with me. Um, I just want to say uh, I have some questions, but if you guys ever want to pop in and add something, please do, because I know that you all are wonderful gentlemen who think really deeply about things. So go ahead and pop on in if I you just want to know if you guys are having fun yet. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you for watching. So my first question is a food question. And um, it's for everyone. Bo, you might be exempt because of being an American, but you're welcome to chime in if you want to. Sounds good. So um, I was told about these delicacies called butter tarts. And yeah. I've been told that there is a lot of debate about what should be in a butter tart. And I would like to know what your answer is is are because apparently there are right answers and there are wrong answers. I would like to know what you think about that. I believe there is no right or wrong way to have a butter tart. And I believe what you're talking about, some people put pecans, some mm -hmm. people put raisins. Yes. You can do a combo, either or. It's still a fucking butter tart. It's <laughs> amazing. It's like butter and sugar and tart. butter and sugar, two of the best ingredients of all time, other than salt. I don't, being an American, I don't know, is it like a cupcake or... It's kind of like it's like a mini pecan it's a pie. It's tart. Somewhat. It looks like a, it's a it tart. looks like it looks like a, it looks like a very small pie. Okay. And wow. without like the lemon stuff, you put raisins and, and pecan in there. And okay. I All hate right. them. Yeah, I had no oh. idea. Okay. I don't like them. I like the way you say pecan. Pecan. <laughs> Our oh, resident I, food critic. I, 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 I have a food question. <laughs> yes. It's got nothing to do with butter tarts, but got look. It. Go ahead. Uh, it's going to be a long answer. <laughs> well, it's going to be a long question. Look, um, <laughs> a million years ago, there was this guy, and he was standing there, and he had a fish, and he was hungry, so he said, I better eat the fish. Good then luck. a thousand years later, this other guy walks up, and he goes, hey, I invented fire. I think if you put the fish over the fire, it would taste better. Now it's a million years later, and we're back to eating raw fish. And I get that. <laughs> No, I get it. It's good and all that. This is my question. If you go to a restaurant and you order this stuff, why do you have to wait? <laughs> no, seriously, they're not cooking it. So, like, what are the... What, oh, oh, God. So, I, that's my question. What takes so long? 
It's raw fish. You put it on the plate. They don't even give you a fork. Like, like what's, they don't even have to clean anything. I don't understand why you have to wait. <laughs> this is the beginning of Food T- Takes with Greg, a new spinoff show. Oh, that's the end of it, too. Greg's Starting not, at the Food Network. Inside, Greg says it's very complicated. He thinks about the big questions. <laughs> it's important. If you don't Google it, you don't know. You know, so... Anyway, I, I don't know. I, I, it, are there raisins in butter tarts, or are they currants? I have are to- they little currants? I've been They're told raisins. raisins, and I have been told that that's, you know, it's oh somewhat acceptable to have raisins, but chocolate chips no, no, is no, going no, into the no, no. absolute that's blasphemy. That question was courtesy of Kristen Hanley, uh, <laughs> script coordinator of White on a Herb. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Always At C.B. Levy. Um, uh, well, we've, we've covered so, butter yes. uh, So speaking of Twitter, Greg... I met you in Calgary a year ago, and I said, Greg, why don't you join Twitter? People will love it. And you said, no, never. And it seems that that has changed, unless someone has just stolen your identity. Well, people have to listen to me uh, (laughs) on Twitter. And uh, at first I was nervous because I thought, oh, here these, here's these people. They're going to be asking me but talking about the show. They want to ask questions about the show. They want to talk about the show. I'm going to give something away, and then I'll be in trouble. So I'll just talk about food. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of like a medium, safe place to be. Um, I don't have time for Twitter. It, like, <laughs> no, it takes too much time. Well, I'll you like you. waiting for your food, right? Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, and... Have you heard of instant noodles? Just want to throw that out there. Instant noodles might be a good thing for you. Well, what's so instant about them? <laughs> well, they, they, they're not instant noodles. They're just, you don't, it's not just like that. They're, you still have to wait. Okay. But I'll tell you one thing. There isn't going to be any Instagram. Um, no, no, no. Speaking of food, who wants my potato? Oh. Now, if I throw this, no one's going to get hurt, right? Oh, somebody's going to lose an eye. It's going to be a toss. In her hand. Oh, my God. Uh, hey, be careful of throwing things. You could hurt someone. I don't want to hurt nobody. Underhanded. Give it some distance, though. Whoop. There it is. Look at oh, that. Good, good catch. Right. Did it go? Right. Where'd it go? <laughs> Hold it up. Uh, oh, you did get it. All right. Question. question Cook it up. Not for Greg. Make question, a butter tart. Not for Greg. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Uh, for Bo and Tim, we talked about your, your like, amazing bromance somewhat at the last panel. There was maybe some Viagra mentions. Um, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about how much you love each other? Because I love your guys' relationship. It makes me the happiest person I'm gonna in the world. I'm going to let Tim start this out because he's this the, we've done panels today and stuff and he seems to be a little miffed at me so I, I would like i'll let him have first that way he can't say that i've mocked him or made fun of him or told another shower story about him so <laughs> i'm gonna let you tell him about our relationship tim it's uh it's an honor He's my hero, and I learned more from him than anybody else in the past decade, and I'm happy to have him in my life. That officially makes me the worst person in the world. (laughs) I had all kinds of funny little anecdotes I was going to tell about Tim, and he has killed all that. I, I will say this, going on this and not to turn into something all serious and, and weepy, but, uh, and I've told Tim this, there's been a couple times since I've known him here just recently that you know, occasions have come up and I thought, eh, I'm going to take a shortcut, now I'm going to strangle this guy, whatever the case may be. And very truthful, the bottom of the boot, I thought, eh, Tim wouldn't do that. So even though he's young enough to be my son, uh, I've, I've 
you know, learned from Tim and I'm inspired from him to where I do not commit acts of violence, um, <laughs> which I'd really like to. I don't say things I think are funny to people that I shouldn't because he wouldn't. So uh, he, has, he has been a big influence in that matter as far as writing with him. He is literally the busiest guy in the world, so it's kind of hard to nail him down, but uh, the times that we do get to sit down and talk about how we're gonna ruin all the other characters that are on the show, it, it's, it's really special. We had one of those this morning, it was just he and I at breakfast, and all we did was talk Winona Earp, comic books, what we're doing in the new graphic novel, uh, Bad Day at Black Rock, all the things Bobo's gonna do, because Bobo plays a huge part in the new graphic novel that we're doing. So, um, yeah, no. I, I got a question about that. Go ahead. Now, every time you, 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 you draw Bobo, do I get paid for that? <laughs> well, for all this money you're making on these comic books? Actually, using my image, can, can I? S I created Bobo Del Rey 20 years ago, so you owe me yeah, back but, <laughs> with interest. All right, we're even. <laughs> well, We've settled it. <laughs> Speaking of Bobo, um, I think uh, this season was Th really... Thank you for complimenting me, so thank you. When <laughs> I didn't force you to murder people. It meant a lot. <laughs> <laughs> He's working on it, Tim. He'll get there one day. It's a struggle. I'm going to split you two up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Michael, uh, yeah. Bobo's arc this season was really beautiful. You kind of saw some of the more... You saw him at his lowest point, which you talked about in the last panel, but you saw more of the shades of gray of him, and um, I think one of the things that brought out his more sympathetic side was um, his relationship with Robin mm -hmm. uh, and their little being jazz buddies. Um, Bobo's got a new friend. Yeah, and that was made Bobo's potential death um, <laughs> even more tragic, and mm -hmm. Robin's realizing it. So can you talk a little bit about that relationship and working mm -hmm. with Justin and how you feel about it? Oh, Justin's great. I, 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 he, he was new for me, you know, because Bobo comes and goes, right? So then, you know, I was just so happy to get out of the well, finally. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then they put me in a glass box. Yeah. <laughs> so, I started to miss that well a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I started working with Justin. We had this beautiful scene, and I never worked with him as an actor before. And you never know. Each, each, first of all, on this show, when you put somebody in a scene with somebody else, it's, there's always a different energy. So you put me in a scene with Tim, and me and Tim love working with each other because it's, it's a game, right? And it's like a game of tennis. We're playing tennis back and forth, and we know when to give to each other and when we know when to take. And uh, we're, we're both willing to win the scene and lose the scene, right? Oh, I agree. Yeah. So then you put, uh, I'm just speaking for myself, you put me in a scene with Dominique and a whole different other thing happens, which I never predicted, even in our first scene in season one, we never knew that that chemistry was gonna develop. Then you throw Bobo in with Melanie Wynonna and it's a whole different thing. So then I worked with Justin and this kind of like sensitive kind of friendship when Bobo has nobody when the revenants have like dumped him and they all just kind of leave him there, I have Justin, right? And we have this little moment where we kind of bond over music and crossword puzzles. And you see this human side of Bobo, right? We've seen him, you know, digging up bones and stuff for like a whole season and being in an insane asylum. But then there's just this nice scene where we just talk about crossword puzzles and jazz music. And that was probably one of my favorite scenes is season three was just that simple little sensitive scene between a piece of glass. Mm -hmm. And working with him was great. I would love to work with him more and see, uh, maybe we'll play video games together someday. <laughs> Who knows? I, uh, one of my favorite uh, days on set was working with him. Um, people need to know that after any actor works with Michael, they talk about it the next day. <laughs> And I was privy to the first time that Varun had his scene with Mikey. Oh, that oh, yeah, was you were yeah. licking my eyeball. Um, <laughs> Varun, the next morning. Wasn't there like he was scared before? He was petrified. And then the same thing with Justin Kelly. And he had Varun and him had just been bonding so much and talking that they were best friends. And Varun was like, you're not ready. You're just not ready for Mikey. <laughs> you think you're ready. You're not ready. And 
Justin is literally maybe Waverly Earp in real life. Like he is just, how pure is that child? Such a nice guy. He's the purest young man. Like he's just perfect. And he's like, really? Whoa, what, like, what, really? And Varun is just, oh, I'm telling you, you're not ready, you're not ready. Uh, and it's fun, because they're super excited, and, and, and it's, it's an absolute pleasure and wild ride to work with, uh, with what is Bobo Del Rey. Bobo. <laughs> and P.S., no offense, but you were in the well for like six months, three months? I did 150 years in the well. The well, I was stuck in the well, and I couldn't get over it. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, after seeing right. Bobo in that well, um, because we only saw Doc's hand when he came out of the well, I wonder if he had as many stains as Bobo had. What, what that giant stain? On, on Bobo? Yeah. On his chest? Yeah. You know what that was? Oh, that's from him being impaled. That's wow. when he got impaled. Wow. At we the just end figured of season that out right two. here. Yeah, and then I ripped off one of my sleeves and tied it around my head. Yes. What's the name of this show? Sorry. Uh, I hate to interject again, but... <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. Michael's first scene back was that, mm-hmm. being stuck in that well, and they had it like a crane on top of the well, because the crane was... The stu- they built this well inside the studio, mm-hmm. and they kind of had like cut a little hole for Mikey to get in there, and he was probably in there 20 minutes before they said action, just so he could... It's Mikey, and he needs to be in his house. So he's, he's doing all this stuff, but watching... There's nowhere else I was going to be. <laughs> Mikey Eklund in the well for the first time in season three. And they put all this water at the bottom of the well. And they were throwing that. Like, I threw a cigarette on you. And <laughs> he's drinking the well water <laughs> mid-scene. And he's looking up at me. He's like, ah, ah. This is not, like, filtered water they just brought in that he's supposed to. This is Mikey drinking the well water that's been there for two hours in his thing, trying to... I thought, I thought it was Evian. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so why I got so sick. It's a, it's, he's, he's a beast of a, of a... I like things feeling real, right? It is right? amazing. And so when you're, you're on a set and, you know, the well is obviously not a real well, you know, I, I have to... I, I, you, I, I don't know if we should get into acting and, and technique and all that stuff. I don't know if you guys care about that stuff, but... Do it. I, 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 I came up with this idea. I don't know if it's a, a real technique, but I use all my senses when I act. So if I have water, I'm going to taste that water. If I have a barrel of a gun in my face, I'm going to lick it. I want to know what that tastes like. If you throw a cigarette at me, I'm going to smoke it. So a prop to me is, is something that I can use. So when they give you five scenes to do in a well, each scene is different. And it's like, it's, it's hard to figure out a new way to do a scene in a well. And that's what made uh, working on this show so fun. And then when I escape the well, they put me in a glass box and I have nothing. So it's like, how do I make these scenes interesting? And uh, Bobo I, in a box is not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have the actors you work with, right? And that's, those were my... You know, I have amazing people to work. I don't know how they find people for this show, where they find them, whether they're from, but they find the best people to work with, and everyone's so playful to work with. And uh, I don't know, I just, it's just a playground for me every time I come to work. But I'm, I, I want to do more scenes with you, buddy. <laughs> it's not well, over. The good thing for me is we have a hat thing going on. I don't know if you've caught it since <laughs> season one, but we have this hat war. <laughs> I'm excited because starting. Friday, maybe depending on where Mr. Smith is at, I might get to write some Doc Bobo scenes in the new book. Nice. So, and then I'll be in control. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, I'm excited about that. So either way, I don't have to wait too long no matter what for us to play. Make sure you check out that Kickstarter. So, or is it an Indiegogo? So you can read all about it. It's a Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. So you can read all about it. Um, this man I haven't worked with. No, yeah. I, I, I think most of my scenes are with the, the women. Like I, I, work, I work with, no, I work with, uh, with you know Mel and and uh, and Dom and Kat. I boy. Uh, they we, they cut our scene. I know they cut. They, yeah, we did I don't think we can talk that, about that it, that but cut. they cut it. But uh, but we did have that little scene in yeah. season two. I had an awesome time yeah. doing that. I loved working with you. I I would love a scene with Bobo. I mean, I like. If there was a flashback or something, <laughs> you know, because I, 
I get a sense that we would have met. Oh, we've met. You know, when you were when you were yeah, riding around on your motorcycle or something, or you know, uh, when it was the when you were the big baddie. Like uh, I said, I've lived there my whole life. Yeah, we would have met uh, since the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, I would. Wow. Yeah. But no, I'd love to work with these guys. But I get to work with everyone else. Sebastian, who played Charlie. Uh, in season three, he said something to me at the rap party that I thought was really interesting, and I think he's right. He said that he had a really good time because everyone has a different process. Uh, all the actors in the show work differently. So you got to be on your toes because Mel works in a different way than, than Michael, and uh, there are diff just different processes. So uh, it just makes it really interesting, that's all, and fun. Because um, you never know what to expect uh, mm -hmm. f from one actor to the next. It can be different, and Justin is the same. That's all I got. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so let's talk about Nedley a little bit. It, I made it this far, you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think his character arc is, is one of the most interesting on the show. I mean, I think that. Um, but from season one, where he started out as kind of a little bit of an asshole, to now in season three, fully part of the team, staking vampires, you know, what do you do with the shotgun? What is the thing? That's a very bad motion to make. Uh, reloading the shotgun? Ca Cocking, that's, anyways, that cocking a cocking shotgun. Cocking the shotgun? Yes, cocking a, uh, cocking a shotgun. So right. one-handed cock. Cocking the shotgun. Cocking the shotgun. <laughs> cocking the shotgun. Okay. Okay. Um, and saying, fuck yeah, the, the best, in my opinion, the best last line yeah. of a season. Um, yeah. I'm... I'm just really happy they let me say it, you know. Um. But can we just talk about, you know, his journey from kind of being well, an antagonist almost to a, a... Well, I think it's just yeah. human nature, you know. No one is all bad and no one is all good. We're a mixture of the two. And given the situation, you see more asshole in someone than, than, than good guy. And if it's a, another situation, you see more good guy than you do... Um, Nastiness, and I think in season one, you, he was just in a situation where uh, people saw the dark side of Nedley, and uh, I think that he's still the same guy. It's just that now you're seeing more of the good side of Nedley. I think he can still be a dick, uh, uh, given the right situation. You know, it's human nature. Um, I think that there really is a clear history that hasn't been explored between Winona and Nedley um, that would explain season one mm -hmm. a bit better uh, and his reaction to her coming back. Um, and, I, and I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm, you know, we're waiting for it. Uh, I'd, lo I'd love to know what, it, what she did to piss off the sheriff. <laughs> you know, uh, It might have been something like really petty. Like, make him wait 20 minutes for sushi. I, I think Nedley had to wait for the fish too long. <laughs> Look, if it's going to take a guy three years to retire, he's going to be grumpy. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's been retiring for three seasons. Um, <laughs> or two seasons. And uh, um, I think that says a lot about the character. I, mm -hmm. think, I think he... He knows that it's right to let go and move on, but he just feels that he can't until everything's set up, right? That's all. Mm -hmm. um, now, we should take, you know, the, the purpose of this panel is it's the, the men's panel, right? Right? So the women, the women aren't here. So you can, we can open this up. <laughs> In what way? <laughs> Ask us anything you want to know about those girls, because this, <laughs> this is our time. Well, um, I, could I say this, because I, I know he, we won't, he won't say it. I found that even if in season one, Nedley was dark or mean, I believe the lightness and the brightness to Greg 
himself came through. And I think the writers had to, you feel it. You can feel the warmth of this human. You know, he's a, he's a great, there's just so much to Nedley that wasn't darkness from day one. Even when he was a dick, you can see whatever vulnerability or complexity there is to Greg himself that the character always had, there was always going to be more with that character from the first instant he, he was there. Well, okay, the thing about actors is that if you don't tell them anything, they'll make it up on their own. <laughs> um, like, it's like an actor in a vacuum. That vacuum is going to be filled up with that person's fantasies or whatever. And, and I, the, the truth is, the honest truth, is that I was worried in season one that Nedley, the character, was going to go in, a, in the area of incompetent sheriff, a sheriff who didn't know what he was doing. And I knew that if that happened, I was going to be dead in the water. So I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I was focusing on choices that made him uh, a little more assertive and a little more... Um, because I can't figure out, it doesn't make any sense. This is what actors do, they ask a lot of questions. Um, He's the best. It doesn't make any sense to me that a, that a sheriff can be sheriff for 30 years and be incompetent. Somebody would have stood up and said, you know what, <laughs> we need a new sheriff. <laughs> um, if you're not gonna do anything, you gotta go. Because it doesn't say anything about the town. I think it's a more interesting choice if he is competent and not able to do anything, if he's competent and powerless. If he's a kick-ass guy when he's 20, finding out that kick-ass doesn't work, it's interesting to figure out that, or to discover that he's smart enough to change his tactics and, uh, and stick with the job that a lot of people probably found it hard to stick with. Um, that's, that was really my take on, on Nedley. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think that he was pissed off at Winona. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um. Just a real quick uh, question, kind of about going off of exploring Nedley and Winona's past. We also got a glimpse into his past, possibly with Michelle. Oh, um, I was hoping. Hashtag Michedley. Um, <laughs> no. Do you do you think that he has a crush on her, or had a crush on her? Dun, 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 dun. I was hoping. You know, Tim gets all these hot, steamy shower scenes. <laughs> um, and I, I, I put on Twitter, that, and I think it's funny, but nobody else did. I said, you know, oh, oh, when's Greg going to, when's Nedley going to have a hot, sexy shower scene? And I said, well, I think Tim Rosen has that in his contract that I'm not allowed to. Um, <laughs> because he, I'll steal the spotlight from him. Um, but no, I, I think that's an interesting way to go. Um, I, th I don't know. I think I'm a little old to be playing romantic stuff. What? Uh, nah, never. Nah. No. If you you said it, can Greg, you can you, you imagine Nedley getting all hot and steamy yeah. and then yes. saying, Woo! Yes. And, Speaking of, speaking of, and, and then he says, "Okay, honey, but first I have to take a nap." Uh, you know. <laughs> no, but we. This came up earlier. Uh, what is yeah. Nedley's Viagra? You oh. never answered. Nedley's Viagra. Nedley's Viagra is um, badass action. Uh, if you give him an opportunity to, to attempt to become the man he used to be 30 years ago, um, I think that would set him on fire. I think he would go crazy. He's, I think he's begging for an opportunity. Who better th um, than that for a probably alcoholic former rodeo queen? Just saying. Oh, okay, but I Nelly's think... Nelly's going to get some action. <laughs> but I think he wants to go and have a bar fight first. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, my um, God. Tag teaming a bar fight. And then he'd be ready. Yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, I just kicked some ass. To defend <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> no, I was hoping. Uh, <laughs> oh, you never it's know. being written right now, right yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, season Emily, four. can you hear us? Yes. Season four. And then his wife will come back to town. I... <laughs> and Chrissy will go, what the hell are you doing? Uh, uh, we'll get back to Chrissy later. 
Uh, but you right now, could I have any one of my shower scenes. Any, if I never have to take my shirt off again, <laughs> I'll be quite content. Yeah, I don't think they're as much fun as everybody thinks they are. <laughs> Uh, so this question's for everybody. So um, as Erpers, we're kind of often asked, you know, what our family members who don't watch the show or don't understand Twitter or social media or fandom, how they feel about it. Um, I was wondering if you guys had any people in your life who were not necessarily unsupportive, but who just are trying to wrap their heads around you know, the fact that you're flying to Minneapolis to hang out in a room of 650 people, and, you know, who want your autograph, and it's like, no, nah, that's just my bud, you know? Like, <laughs> I have a friend named Rod, and he, he makes fun of these things. He goes, oh, you're a big shot, you're signing an autograph. Uh, not, all my friends are not in the business, and they don't really care what I do. And, um, and he said, you'd never give me your autograph. And I said, well, I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> But then on his birthday, I, I, I got a picture of myself, and I, 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 made, it, I made it a 45-inch uh, big screen size. And I had it framed, and I wrote on it, Rod, you're an asshole. Best regards, Greg Lawson. And, um, and I spelled my name L-A-R-S-O-N, which is not how to spell it. <laughs> well, he still doesn't have the other. And he hangs, he hangs it in his living room, which is... <laughs> Creepy as hell. Um, Anybody else have any good, you know, family well, members? Well, for anybody? people, some people know, some people don't know. My other business, like I'm in the restaurant business, so cooks and are pretty mean. Uh, like I'll open the walk-in fridge to get stuff, whatever, probably sushi for the impatient table. Or, uh, whatever it is, and they'll put giant pictures of me unfortunately that have circulated the internet at certain of these conventions that are out of context impossible to explain such as if someone takes this uh, and I will walk open the fridge and it's there or I'll go to, you know, I'll open the, the, the stove and they've put stuff in there but the interesting thing is everybody knows what an erper is which is cool because I've, if I've heard like staff or people in my work going, hey man those erpers are crazy people, huh? And I'm like, you better believe it. But just the fact that, uh, because honestly, you're a thing. Erpers are a thing. Oh, like, yeah. without us, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I like that you guys are... I got, I got defended on Twitter by, well, here, a friend of mine got on there. And, and this is a friend, you know, who doesn't know anything about the show, the comic book, or anything got on Twitter and just, you know, the usual smart-ass remark that you make to your buddy, you know, that kind of thing, and did it, well, and I don't know which Erpers it was because this is the beginning, but they took it as he was serious. They jumped his feces like you would not <laughs> believe. He calls me up like 10 minutes later, you've got all these people that are threatening to kick my butt. Well, they're telling me what a good guy. Are you some sort of saint? What's going on? And he was totally taken by surprise. I said, you don't mess with the Erpers. He goes, I know what an Erper is now. I said, ball peen hammer, bud. So if you're out there and we're one of those people, I thank you because, you know, I get a lot of my buddies that, you know, give me crap about that. You all stop that on Twitter. Uh, and that was, I mean... No playground bullies are going to bother Bobo and take my lunch money. <laughs> I mean the other Bobo that's spelled different. But I'm serious. Th so thank you very much. Tim's 100% right. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what an erper is now. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody online knows not to mess with an erper. Yeah. Because I know I've had some run-ins on, on social media, and all i got to do is call in the troops, <laughs> whether it's an erper or a wolf pack or whoever, and I go, take over, people. <laughs> and you guys do. And I just sit back and that person goes away. <laughs> you don't mess with you guys. You guys are an army. They're in the well. You're an They're earth in the army. Well. Mm -hmm. We love fiercely. Um, so we're going to open up the floor to audience questions in just a minute. Um, so just remember, questions. Um, so if you have a question, uh, you want to start lining up, I'll go to you after this question. So start thinking of them now. Problems, uh, life, anything. Yeah. So as Michael Greg's mentioned. here to solve it all. <laughs> <laughs> as Michael mentioned, we don't have any of the girls here. No. Well, Danny's been back so, there the whole time supporting I know. and I appreciate yeah. it and love She's it. drunk. She is so drunk. 
Um, but do you guys have any um, funny stories now that they can't, or you know, embarrassing things that you can tell us that now that they're not here to defend themselves? Mm. Do you have any? I know better to answer that question. <laughs> no, I'll get in trouble. You won't. Not embarrassing. No, no. Do you do you want to gush about them? Because we can also do that. Because they're pretty great. Yeah, I like gushing <laughs> about them. Uh, I'll, gu- I'll gush about something. Because I've worked with each woman, except for, uh, I haven't worked with a cat. cat much. Have I? She broke me out of the insane asylum. Yeah. And she drove the car. That was, I think that was, oh, and then we dug up that, that thing in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the graveyard. So we had that scene together. But we haven't had a real scene. But I'll, I'll tell you a little inside scoop. Mm-hmm. I had a little crush on her before. But when I showed up on set and I heard she was playing... Um, Nicole Hot, I was like, I think I even said to him, like, who, who's, who's that, Tim? I'm like, who's, who's the writer? <laughs> and I know her then fiance, Ray. I didn't know they were a couple, but I had a little crush on her first, and then I found out she was taken. So, but I love Ray. I love them together. <laughs> yeah. She got away. <laughs> the search continues. But... Okay, uh, first question. Hi. 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 We learn there is a men of purgatory calendar. <laughs> there is? There is? Yes. Uh, what month would you be oh. and why? Well, if there was one? No. There well, is one. There is one. Who there made is it? One? Well, the firefighters. Oh. Have, like, okay. Okay. I was like, they made one? I've no. Been, I've been with them all day. <laughs> and you didn't get now. the first one? <laughs> you and your character. What month we would be? And why, yeah. And why? I want to be December. Why? Santa baby. Because I like Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but Nedley's suit. kind of like not a Christmas guy. Says who? He? he was... He was Santa. Well, was he, he was not a happy Santa. That was more about the missing children. <laughs> no, before. He's like, you can't sit on my knee. Well, I, I have a bum knee. You know, I, uh, well, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, no, I, I think he's a Christmas guy. But I, oh, but I think he's a lonely Christmas guy. Oh, Sad scene. No, in a good so way. I think he's like making little fly hooks, you know, you yes. know for fishing. This is why you, you know. need a woman. <laughs> That's Hashtag Michelle Lee. <laughs> um, you brought up something interesting. I'll say June, but um, you guys should figure this out for me. So figure out who's got the crush on the fire department in the writing department because season yeah, two nah, was right. the fire guy, hot fire guy. And you should see the way it's written in the script. You're like, you don't get our character descriptions either, but it's like brooding hot fire guy. <laughs> Crushes through the door. It's like, it's, it's really, someone's got a thing. That's for true. The, <laughs> I, think ah, right. I think you're right. Caitlin, I think it's Caitlin. Thank you. <laughs> but Shelly didn't write season two. I don't know. Well, Caitlin did. Uh, who, months? Um, April. And that probably is because April Fool's Day and you'd be foolish to want to see me semi-naked on a calendar. <laughs> I never said it was a naked cal- I never said it was a semi-naked oh. calendar. It's, it's assumed. <laughs> it's, oh. okay. It'd be April, oh, I'm such a fool, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You scared the crap out of us because now we're all going to join a gym. <laughs> <laughs> I think this calendar is going to happen now. I want two months. Two months. Go ahead. I, I think I deserve two because Robert's fame. Uh, oh, I think he should get January because it's the beginning. Ooh. You already covered. Ooh. We're in the deep end. Oh, I'm going. I'm going method Good. now. It's, yeah. That was the beginning. You already took December, so I'll, I'll grab November for Bobo. Nice. In the cold November rain. There we go. Yeah, cold November rain. Stuck in a well. <laughs> <laughs> Naked in a well. Thank you. With oh, you got only the fur coat, of course. <laughs> you, you, Bobo don't wear no underwear. Um, He's commando. <laughs> I actually have a a quick uh, Bobo costume question. When he became Bolshar's lieutenant, was that just got the old guy's uniform? Cause he was he supposed to look uncomfortable in it? <laughs> 
because I know his like go to is is very fashionable fur. Was Bullshard just like, come here, you gotta wear this? Um, <laughs> it's it's a all, uniform. I, I hated that that costume. Okay, for many reasons. But yes, you're on to something. It was uh, there was another character that was like Bullshard's kind of lackey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bobo. Was that? <laughs> it's Bobo. Yeah. Is it Bobo? The, light, the lights are very bright. Wow. Sorry, guys. You're the Bobo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and who is that? There's more Bobos. There's another There's, Bobo we in only, line. We only see silhouettes. Yeah, yeah it's very bright. It's there like you go. Lights. Oh, you got the straps. The woman's coat for a coat. <laughs> well, maybe you should get another month for that one. But, but that, uh, the rubber suit, I called it. Yeah, uh, Bulchar has like his little lackey. And that was part of the whole uh, arc of Bobos. He's just been stripped away from everything. And now he's just kind of like his, you know, his, his like slave. Mm-hmm. And so they stripped me from my power coat and they put me in this rubber suit. And if I looked uncomfortable in it, it was because I was. And a little funny story, if you guys like behind the scenes stuff, I almost passed out the first time I wore that. In the scene, in the last season when I'm sitting in Waverly's bedroom mm-hmm. in the corner, looking at the scrapbook. Um, first of all, when you're on set, it's like this with the lights, it gets really hot. And so that was like leather boots, leather pants, a leather jacket with a rubber tire vest over top of it and a, 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 a leather beret. And so what happens is the heat from the lights in your body gets trapped. So I was stuck in like a little furnace. And so we rehearsed the scene and I started to feel a little kind of woozy. Mm-hmm. And then we did one take and I forgot all my lines for some reason, which doesn't usually happen. And then the second take, I had to get up and walk over to her, and I started feeling really dizzy. And then I started to freak out. Like, I freaked out. Mm -hmm. I, like, walked off set. Everybody's following me back to the trailers going, Mike's lost his mind. (laughs) And it was because I I was hyperventilating, and it was just the heat. I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you got to get this off me. And I started trying to rip it off. And they were like, no, 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 don't wreck it. And I was like, no, it just has to come off. Like, I'm I'm freaking out. And I've never had that happen before. And so we took it off and then we put kind of ventilation, you know, we cut some stuff into it and then it worked. Mm-hmm. But I was very uncomfortable in that, that suit and I hated it. So in that last scene when I face off with Doc before Waverly comes in, I take off the hat. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was Mike. Just like, get this hat off me. So yeah, that's, that's the story behind that rubber suit, I call it. I hope I never wear it again. Mm-hmm. Okay, unfortunately, we only have time for two more questions. So sorry, guys, if you're in line. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Or unless they're quick, go. Yeah, yeah this will be quick. Um, if your character could be oh. in, a de- in a different TV universe, oh. what would it be and why? And also, for Bo, if, the, if you're taking take your comic book character and so put them in a different comic book universe, which would you choose? And why? First thing, what comes to mind? Bobo Vikings. Ooh. <laughs> I missed I couldn't hear the question. Oh, uh, if you could put your the comic characters yeah, in another comic universe, where would you put them? Oh, comic universe. Well, for you guys, it was for, for okay. movies or TV, right? If we answer yeah. quick, we can get more questions. Yeah. Oh, for, for me, uh, it, it, if I could take the, the comic book characters that they've got, put them in another comic book, no matter who, uh, it'd be probably a couple of gifts for, for, Mel, uh, for Emily. I would have him in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That'd be good. For, to be honest with you, for Mikey, for Nedley, for Holiday, for all them, I'd, I'd do the crossover with the Supernatural comic. So it'd be the guys and the guys really going at it. So those, and the, that's actually something I've sat around watching TV going, I'd love to see these guys, I'd love to see these girls in this. So yeah, those would be my two. Uh, the 18. <laughs> Nedley would be Murdoch. in gun, gun smoke. <laughs> the A-team. The A-team. Oh, Good show. Maybe they should all be yeah, in the A-team. Thank you. Okay, next question. Hi, I, I'm Fred from the Netherlands, um, so not a native speaker. Um, if you were a female in your character, what do you, what you would do different? Hmm. When I'm at home and my wife asks me, do this and that, I always say, sorry, honey, I only have one X chromosome. Sorry, I'm a geneticist. Females have two X chromosomes. They can do different things. What would you do? What would you be able to 
do if your character was a female in this series? What you can do now? I, I, can I jump in? Yeah. Bobo could multitask. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's Bobo can only of... dig up bones or try to get out of the, the triangle. If I, could, if I was a woman, I could do it all. Yeah. That's I can what multitask. My, that's what my wife says. Right? Um, Doc could be the hero. Oh. oh. Yeah. Now we're going deep. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing okay, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Having some real dark answers today. <laughs> Tim's sad. It's a rainbow onesie to, to distract. <laughs> I think that whatever Nedley does now, if he was a woman, he'd probably just do it quicker and smarter. Oh, yeah. Um, a little fly fishing, a little make the little things. <laughs> oh, that would be an art. Be, <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, that, uh, I, I think that's going to have to be our last question. I'm sorry, guys. What? Oh. I'm so sorry. We have time. Things are happening. But please come by all their tables. They're awesome dudes, as you can see. Please thank them for being here. So thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kat Zim. You killed it. You were amazing. Thank you, Kat. You killed it. Thank you very much, also. Thank you so much. Okay.